All right, so the physics idea of work. Work is the amount of energy that you end up expending to move an object or displace an object a certain distance applying some force to it. So a few things that I need you to see specifically from this definition. Um, it's all about how much energy you spend. That's what work is, and it requires a displacement. Uh, the equation for work is force times displacement cosine theta. Now, um, first let me talk about the displacement idea. So, uh, notice in the equation, force times delta x, and that can be delta y if it's in the y-axis, right? If you don't move an object, you have done, according to physics, absolutely zero work. No work done if you don't move a delta x, because zero times anything. So, aka, you can push on a wall for as long and as hard as you'd like, but if the wall doesn't go anywhere, you have still done no work. So really it's the amount of energy expended you know, that's actually causing a displacement, just like the definition says. Now, cosine theta. The cosine theta here is to align a force and a displacement that might not be in the same direction, kind of like in this picture over here. The displacement is directly in the y-axis, but the force is going up at the angle, and work all that matters is what amount of force is causing it to displace some distance d, which is going to be the component f cosine theta. It's going to be this component of the force. So the cosine theta aligns those two. All right. Now force f can be broken down, obviously, into multiple other forces, and you can solve for these things using Newton's second law. Right. So, for example, in this problem over here, We'll have work equals the force that the weightlifter lifts at, so we'll call it FL, uh, and then delta Y, right, how high he's lifting it, which we're told is 2 meters, uh, and then cosine theta. Thankfully for us, though, uh, cosine theta, the, the two things aren't at an angle. So let, let me come back and talk about that for a second. The, the theta part is specifically the angle between the force and the displacement, the angle between the force and the displacement. So here, um, I've got the force is going straight up, right? So F, FL is going straight up, and the displacement is going straight up, as well whenever the weightlifter lifts it up. No angle between them. So cosine theta, cosine of zero is just one, so that, that completely goes away. So weight equals FL delta Y. Now the question is, well, what, what is FL? Well, if we're assuming that this guy is lifting at constant velocity, um, that would mean you know, gi giving a quick free body diagram here, right? FL going up and FG going down, so, uh, you know, some of the forces, some of the forces equals MA, A here would be zero, FL minus FG equals zero, aka the force that the guy has to lift up is equal to gravity, assuming that he's doing it at constant velocity. That's something you already know very well. So work here that he has to do is going to equal the force of gravity, times delta y. Well now force of gravity breaks down into mg, right? So mg delta y is going to equal work. By the way, uh, just log this idea in your brain. You're going to see mg delta y come back um, in, in a different part uh, of this of this unit. Um, so work equals mg delta y. Well that I all, I know everything. That would give me work is going to equal, my mass there is listed at 50 kilograms between the two. 50 times gravity, 9.81 times my y of 2 meters, which brings me to my work equaling 981 joules. Uh, the unit for work here is joules. All right, so I'm going to work a kind of a plug-chug problem here for you. I have a man out here pushing his lawn mower uh, with 135 newtons of force, and whenever he's zigzagging all over his yard, he's going to end up going 150 meters. So he's tur tur turning and changing directions, but the net displacement between all that is 150 meters. Um, now, notice um, he's applying the force directly down the shaft of the, the lawnmower there, or the, the handle of the lawnmower. Normally, you'd apply a force directly across, um, so, so you weren't doing more work than you needed to. But uh, this man, apparently, he isn't the brightest of all. He, he's pushing straight down on that. So my equation, work equals F delta X cosine theta, and that just becomes a plug chuck. 
And I get with significant figures 12,000 joules. All right, let me talk for a second about graphing work, and I want to hit this uh, very, uh, very fast. Um, whenever you can graph anything, amount of force applied uh, against how far you're going. And if, if the force you're applying is constant, your graph is going to be flat. I'm applying three newtons uh, constantly over five meters, which is a very simple plug and chug right through this. Notice I left off the cosine theta. Here I'm assuming that we're going in the exact same direction, that cosine theta Theta is the angle between the two, the displacement and the uh, direction you're going. That cosine theta gets you the component of the force, F, that is going the direction you want it to go, right, in line with uh, the displacement or delta x. That's why that cosine theta is there, to get, it, to get them both in line. So theta there, cosine theta, angle between the force and the displacement. Uh, getting back to this though, work equals force times displacement, ignoring the cosine theta because we're going to assume that they're going the same direction, theta is zero, so it, it disappears. Now, um, whenever it's straight across like this, this is very simple. Like in this problem, I have a force of three newtons, that would be three, and I have a displacement of five meters. Well, that, that's a piece of cake, right? Um, you plug and chug, it's 15, right? So this, this we can go ahead and put work equals 15 newtons. But whenever you don't have something that is going uh, at a con with a constant force, if the force is changing, thus the acceleration is changing, you're going to have to use a graph like this one down here. The force is constantly increasing. Um, and it would be even weirder if, if I had some sort of curve going on, then you would require calculus actually for this. Um, but we're just going to deal with straight lines. But here's a changing force. How can you do that? You're actually going to get the area underneath the line, the area underneath the line going down to the x-axis, going down to x equals zero there. So the area underneath the curve, if it's curved, area underneath the line, if you will, here, right? So the area, and it makes different shapes. Here I've got a nice little rectangle. Down here I've got a uh, triangle, right? So why does this work? Well, well here, here's why. Area equals base time height. So now check this out. I'm going to take this equation right here. Right? That means here area equals what's on the, uh, and let's do height times base just to keep it the same. What's on the height? Well, the height is whatever force was used, right? And what is on the base? Well, the base side of this graph is delta x. So area equals f times delta x, right? which is the equation for work, right? So height times base, base times height, same thing, right? Area is going to equal whatever force I had, this part, the, right, um, times that part, times the force, right? That side of it, so the two sides of my rectangle. That's going to mean that work, right, you know, work equals F delta X. That's my equation, so area, area underneath the line, is the work that you do in a force displacement graph. So this, this graph over here, well, this is, this is relatively simple. It's a triangle. We all know the equation for a triangle. It's one-half base times height, right? One-half, and I'll use a capital B and a capital H. One-half base times height um, is going to give me my work. That's the area under, so that would be one-half times my base, which is listed at five meters, right? The displacement uh, times my height, which is listed at three newtons, so work would equal, not worrying about sig figs, seven and a half joules.